Hello and welcome to Inside New York City Dance, giving you an inside look at the dance world in New York City. I'm your host, Ashani Infuko, and on today's show we have two incredibly special guests. I'm so excited to have them on the show. First, we have master ballet teacher Kat Waldish. She teaches right down the road at the Ailey Extension, and you've probably been to one of her showcases at the Ailey City Group Theater. And then second, I'm so excited, the iconic, the amazingly talented Abdel Salam, who is a choreographer and also the artistic director of Forces of Nature Dance Theater. It's gonna be a fabulous show. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. So first, let's take a look at Kat Waldish in her ballet class in action, teaching some of her students. Check it out. You're watching Inside New York City Dance. And. And skippy, skippy, chasse, out, tombe, par de bourre. Look like you like it. Chasse, out, tombe, par de bourre. And one kick, land. That's good, that crew. And kick, land, par de bourre. Welcome back. I am here with master ballet teacher Kat Wildish. Welcome to the show, Kat. Thank you. Okay, your, your showcases, your classes, you're bringing the dance community together. You're a ballet teacher, but yet you have jazz, you have modern, you have hip hop. You're bringing everyone together at these showcases that you do. Um, so I really want to talk about that and how it got started. But first, tell me about your ballet classes at the Ailey Extension, because you have different levels, you have different age groups. Tell me how you work that out with all of your classes. Well, I've tried to schedule and keep my schedule going for the past 38 years so that it's con continuous and has a continuity to it, so you know where to find me mm -hmm. and what for getting there. Yeah. Um, I teach all levels. I teach, uh, we just started an absolute beginner class on Friday nights at Ailey, mm -hmm. and it's for absolutely beginners. You can walk in with your socks on and no knowledge, and we start doing stuff. Wow. So I find that it actually draws in professional dancers that want to go back to the basics and wear their point shoes mm -hmm. and have a really slow class with live music. So we start our absolute beginners. 
I have a couple of, a couple, actually about five um, advanced beginner classes. Mm -hmm. Those are for adults who have been training maybe when they were kids and they gave up and they're coming back to it. Right. So they're not beginners, they know what they're doing mm -hmm. and they need an adult beginner class. So they're my advanced beginners because mm -hmm. they're adults and they, yeah. they know. Then we have our intermediate classes which are our professional dancers in the field or rockets on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It's a six o'clock class where you can come warm up before the show and yes. get there on time because we're so conveniently located. Right. And then I have spread out during the week some point classes for adults because nice. oftentimes we're afraid to go up on point mm -hmm. as adults but believe it or not it's more, it's healthier to go up when your bones are all ossified and you're strong. Mm -hmm. So adult point work can be safe if it's taught properly. Very good. It seems like you have a passion for adult ballet dancers. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Because it's not over, right? It doesn't, no. it doesn't end. You hit a certain age and then it's over. Like, no, you can still keep dancing. No, what happens when I go around and teach all over the world and all over the country mm -hmm. is I find out, and I love teaching the children, mm -hmm. but I find out that when you turn 16 or you graduate from high school, there's not a place for you to go. Mm -hmm. So when you said about why I started the performing uh, in New York mm -hmm. series, those uh, adults, 16 and above, um, they don't have any place to go and perform. If they're not professional dancers, mm -hmm. they need to find adult classes. Right. And oftentimes adult classes are not geared uh, for performance or geared to teach you more than just the exercises and keep you in shape. Right. I try to do that. I try to give you those ballerina tips mm -hmm. and those ballet things that keep you in prime shape and keep you feeling like you are a dancer. Right. Because even though you may be a professional graphic artist mm -hmm. or if you have that passion for dance, you should be able to pursue it. That's right. And it's very hard to do that. In New York, we can. Mm -hmm. And then going beyond that into performance, I offer three times a year a performance. It's a workshop. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be in mine that's ballet. I um, talked to Bev Brown down at Broadway Dance Center and Pavon is center uh, town. Mm -hmm. He has um, hip hop. I also deal with the salsa people mm -hmm. and the ballroom <laughs> dancers from Connecticut and all over. I have also adults coming in from New Jersey and oh, Long wow. Island and there's schools around where the adults do this and to have an opportunity to perform Midtown New York yeah. is it's for a, adults. Yeah, it's huge because some people would say, oh, your time has passed or it's over. If you haven't been a professional, then you don't get to perform, but it's cool that they have that opportunity. Well, Ashley, you know when it comes to performing in front of a group, mm -hmm. it's one of those things you have to develop. You know your confidence yes. to speak in front of a group or dance in front of a group, and it's one of those things in life, even speaking in front mm -hmm. of a large audience, that where do you get that training? Yeah. Where do you practice? And if you have the confidence and you have the desire to do that, dancing and this form of performing is just, it's a wonderful thing for them to be able to do. Definitely. So and let's they talk grow about, in confidence. Yeah, let's talk about the showcases then. You have one set of showcases that we're, we were kind of mentioning with the adults and professionals mixed together and then you have the festival of dance schools performances too so talk about the difference between those two okay the performing in new york series mm -hmm. for my adults that happens in march mm -hmm. also in august we have an intensive where they work for three weeks and then they perform nice. and then we do it again in november at the thanksgiving weekend mm -hmm. that's our time and so they all gear up for that and the people that are in New York for the Thanksgiving Day Parade, mm -hmm. we get a lot of those people coming in to see the show That's because fun. there's nothing else up. Right. <laughs> so it's great. Right. Uh, our audiences, they come and they just keep coming back because what they see up there on the stage is pieces of themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. pieces of themselves and their desires and their... Uh, you know, dreams. Yeah, they relate to it. That's why the show sells out all the time and people can't get tickets Absolutely. if they wait too long. Absolutely. So tell me about the Festival of Dance Schools. Festival of Dance Schools usually happens the first week in June. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I invite 
dance schools in the area. Um, Steps mm -hmm. Children's Program, mm -hmm. um, Kozlova School, Gelsey Kirkland yes. School. We invite Broadway Dance Center, Perry Dance, mm -hmm. and their professional children's program right. because I felt in my career growing up, it was the performance opportunities where I really learned my craft. Definitely. And when you're really on stage and maybe you forget a step and you have to keep going, <laughs> you know, or maybe the lights come down and you've got to keep going. Right. Or if the music stops, you've got to learn that and you can't learn that in the studio. No, you have to have that real life experience. Yeah, Absolutely. in front of the people, in front of the audience. Yeah. And so I wanted my my festival of dance schools to be another opportunity for these professional children mm -hmm. to have a performance. I love that. And oftentimes the schools they can only afford one performance a year or right. maybe two because it's so costly. Yeah, but I bring them all together and we share the costs so that everybody benefits. That's and wonderful. I love doing that and I want to do more. Yes, And I I'm love working it. on some other projects. To you do are. More. So speaking, it's a great segue, Kat. Speaking of other projects, uh, there are two other things that I wanted to, to talk about with you. One is your teacher training for, for adults, ballet teacher training for adults. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I'm um, myself and I'm certified in the ABT training course mm -hmm. that trains from K through 12 in there and tr training to the point for children mm -hmm. yeah, in the school. Chiquetti's program also trains children through 12. Our RAD program, that's the Royal Academy of Dancing. Yeah. All of these certifications train teachers to teach children till they're about 16. Right. I've been teaching those children that are now <laughs> 16 to age 80 something. Right. Um, <laughs> I've been teaching those for about 38 years. Right. So I've been approached by many different angles to begin a university where I can pass on the information about teaching adults. Wonderful. Yeah, so around the nation and around the world yeah. actually, we need more adult classes. Yeah. So when you go and visit Paris, France, you can go to a school and you don't have to take with 12 year old little kids. <laughs> you can take a proper with other professionals. Right, who are in that, your age group. <laughs> and love ballet. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I love it, yeah. And I'm um, in the initial stages now. It's not released yet or right. we're in the initial stages of developing a accreditation program mm -hmm. where even though you teach ballet, you can now get accredited to teach adults and understand the difference between teaching adults and children. Yes, because there is a difference. Absolutely. And I think people need to learn more about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So you have so much going on. Where can we connect with you online to learn more about all of your showcases, your class schedule, all of that? Oh, you're so kind to say that. <laughs> I have a website that's catwildish.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, there are many other websites like Cat Wildish Showcases. Mm -hmm. So if you're a choreographer and you want to put together a workshop mm -hmm. so that you can perform on my programs, that would be the place, okay. Cat Wildish Showcases. Fabulous. Dot com. Mm -hmm. um, also, you can always reach me at the Ailey Extension. Right, of course. Okay, through of the course. Ailey <laughs> website and the Ailey Theater. And I'm just out there. You're Look out there. You're all over the place. I know, but you know? I'm, I'm there <laughs> so that we can all work together and we can get what we need yes. in the dance world. And I love it. And I thank you so much for coming on the show today, Oh, Kat. thank you for having me. Wonderful. It's been so, a pleasure. Thank you. Ca connect with Kat at catwaldish.com and stay tuned because we're coming back with Abdel Salam. <laughs>
guys, welcome back. I am here with a very, very special individual, Mr. Abdel Salam. He's a choreographer and the artistic director of Forces of Nature Dance Theater. You know who they are. Everybody knows who they are. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Ashani. It's my pleasure. It's, yeah. it's good to have you here. Yeah. Um, you guys have been going on now for 31 years, almost 32 years. When you started this company, what was kind of your mission or your purpose behind starting your company? I was fascinated uh, initially with um, a variety of forms of dance and, and, and a number of genres. Um, my dance mother, Joan Miller at Lehman College, exposed us to um, uh, Limon and ballet and Horton and East Indian dance and postmodern. And, and Chuck Davis was on faculty and wow. Juan Antonio, um, uh, Louis Falco. Um, people from the San Sardo School. Mm. And, um, and Louis, uh, uh, I think that the, the, the impetus to, to choreograph came from her taking me to see um, a number of different concerts in 1970, mm -hmm. I believe. And when we came back, um, many of the students were talking about the performers. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting up in the third balcony, and, and I think Ailey was doing something like um, choral dances. And everybody was uh, uh, raving about the, the, the agility and the technique of the dancers. And, and when I, she asked me to give what my assessment was, mm -hmm. I was looking at the lighting, the <laughs> staging, the costumes, right. you know, and, and all of the art, if you will, um, that was impressing me. And I remember saying to the, to the class, I think I can do this. And of course, everybody laughed. Of course. <laughs> and so here we are, um, my God, 40 some odd years later, you know, and, and um, uh, I attribute, of course, that initial vision to her. Um, she was uh, a social political activist who used dance and the arts in order to make statements of what she felt was um, healing mm. for society. Mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Davis, of course, was, a, was a, an amazing um, a diaspora and cultural nationalist um, who used vernacular dance and movement, again, to make statements that he thought would be important in, in the healing of, of us as an African-American people. Yes. So, but, but probably by um, melding those two visions together, uh, the contemporary dance world, um, uh, my desire to make social political statements and ultimately uh, ecological and environmental statements that could uh, stimulate people to, to, uh, to live a life that's more in harmony um, with the ecosystems of our planet, yes. along with our our issues and problems as a people. Right. Those were things that um, ultimately uh, kind of uh, somewhere I fused the two of them together, and and then the impetus for my choreographic vision began. I love that. So mm -hmm. Earth Rights is something that stood out to me when I went to your website and was mm -hmm. kind of doing my research. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what Earth Rights is and and why you started it. Um, Earth Rights is, is a division of the work, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's kind of like um, something that we refer to in the company as one of the living books um, of, of, the, of the material. Um, I was reading uh, a famous Egyptologist by the name of Gerald Massey when I was um, the Minister of Culture in the Harlem uh, Institute for Egyptological Research, and this was back in 73. Mm -hmm. And um, 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 one of Massey's books, A Natural Genesis, talked about uh, everything evolving from the forces of nature. Mm. Um, that, the, that nature was our first teacher, uh, whether it was uh, celestial nature in terms of the sun, moon, and star, mm -hmm. or the systems and, and, and ecological forces that we see within the planet and the terrestrial uh, forms of life that we see on the planet, that we, uh, we learned most of, of our initial lessons about life, society, um, being um, by studying the forces of nature. And I th said to myself, wow, if I'm looking for a ways and means to talk about any and everything that I wanted to talk about, right? you know, there Hello. we go, the forces of, <laughs> force of nature. So Earth Rights is an evolution of that, of that philosophy. Um, uh, many of the earlier works that I did um, focused on environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I can't call myself an ecologist because I'm not a, uh, I'm not that scientifically inclined. <laughs> um, but the environment was something that um, certainly impressed me. When when I also took a look at um, African spiritual traditions, yes, um, 
um, and religions and, and, a, and a variety of things that existed within, the, within those societies, I saw that there was a direct link between their, their honoring and worship of nature, you know, and how they formulated the, the rites, rituals, and, and uh, raison d'etre, if you will, you mm -hmm. know, of, of you know, their reason for being um, that came out of their respect for nature. And so this was something that I tried to do and have been attempting to do a journey that I've been on for my entire life is to take the things that I, that I am uh, moved by and impressed with, stimulated by within nature, and use those, uh, use those, um, uh, use those elements as, as an impetus to choreograph and hopefully to stimulate conversation mm -hmm. um, um, amongst the viewers and people, my audience that comes, so that people uh, ask certain questions um, maybe there, are, maybe there's never answers. Maybe it's only questions <laughs> that you know that we we ask ourselves um, to ultimately improve the the quality of life and and and, um, and understand why we're here. Another important part of your work is mm -hmm. connecting with the youth mm -hmm. and working in the schools and arts organizations to kind of open their minds, educate them, empower them. Why mm -hmm. was it important for you to do work that directly works with the youth? I'm a baby boomer, you know, and, and I was p part of that um, African-American uh, generation of young men um, that, w that initially w were to be written off. Mm. Um, if you take a look at, at, at the environment that I came out of, I remember that, you know, uh, uh, drugs came into the elementary schools, mm. you know, in the late 50s and 60s. Um, uh, Harlem was, uh, at the time, in a downward spiral. Um, and so the social, social political content and the variety of movements that took place within the Harlem community were things that as a young teenager I was impacted by. Right. You know, a number of different movements, uh, the, 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 the mindsets that talked about what could we do in order to heal ourselves and at the same time empower ourselves. And, and, and so uh, at, at Lehman College, you know, I was fortunate to meet a number of teachers that, that empowered me yeah. and told me that whatever I did with my life, whether it was the arts, or any, any kind of, uh, of, of a job that I had that I, that I should focus on, how do I use that in order to improve the quality of, of, of life of our people? Mm -hmm. Young people, um, which at one point in my life I was a young person, <laughs> right. um, are in great need of uh, to, to, uh, some degree of guidance, mm -hmm. um, a foundation, um, and, and someone that can kind of, if you will, be a, what we call in our circle, a, a semsu or a shemsut, you know, someone that can help lead, um, you know, lead them, uh, for, uh, help them to discover the, 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 the blessings and the demons of their ego, mm -hmm. um, find out why they're here, figure out where they're going, and also have a respect for the past and the present, understanding that if you understand the past and the present, that will take you further into the future. Yes. Um, my wife says to me all the time, but I spend so much, uh, when, rather than talking about my work and the things that I've done, I spend so much time <laughs> in the underpinnings and the philosophy of what it is. Right. But, but, you know, and that I should use these uh, venues and these opportunities to talk about the things that I have done. Right. But I find that, I find that it, it is the reason why, uh, it, it is the reasons and the things that have stimulated me, you know, that have, that have greatest impact on, uh, on my being. I mean, um, uh, I worked in model cities. I, I, I worked um, uh, uh, for the Harlem Youth Federation. Right. Uh, um, I worked for, um, uh, with uh, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in, in, in their youth programs and, and the Manhattan Valley Youth Program. So working with young people, empowering young people was something that's always been a part of my being. Mm -hmm. But my first choreographic ventures came to the Artists in the Schools program in 1973 where I was traveling around with Chuck Davis as his assistant. Mm -hmm. and. I had to actually go in sometimes into school environments and stay for one week, two weeks, three weeks, six weeks, you know, th uh, two months, and choreograph on a body of young people and search for ways and means to communicate simple ideas mm -hmm. that would stimulate, you know, their sense of empowerment and their growth and development. Right. So that my desire to choreograph came out of actually working with young people. So it that was, connection you know, was there from the beginning. That connection was there from the, from the beginning. Right. Yeah. And then it just uh -huh. grew, as your company grew, right. you maintained that connection 
even as you guys toured all over the country and all over the world, you still kept that going. Absolutely. So I know you guys have a bunch of performances and mm -hmm. things coming up. Can you quickly, before we close, tell me like one or two things that are coming up that we can um, hopefully go and support and, and watch and experience the company? Sure. December is always a very busy month for us. Mm -hmm. um, we have two performances at Riverside uh, Ch uh, Theater at Riverside Church on the 7th and 8th of December. Mm -hmm. Then we are, we are a permanent fixture in the Paul Winter Solstice at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, where we were in residence for 23 years. We're now in residence at St. Martin's Church in Harlem. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the 13th, 14th, and 15th, four performances. We are at El Museo de Barrio, I can't roll my R's, <laughs> um, on the 20th, uh, doing a, uh, uh, a cultural slash Kwanzaa event. And then we have our annual event, um, which is now 31 years old. It's, it's housed in the Apollo. It's now at the Apollo Theater. Mm -hmm. But our Regeneration Night um, Kwanzaa celebration is on the December 28th at the Apollo. Wonderful. Um, tickets, tickets are available for all of that. And then next year, we, we, we go to Washington for the IABD the, you know, uh, conference. And then I take them down south for a minute. And I'm working on a James Brown project with Otis, <gasps> Otis Elite and the Apollo. So I'm kind of excited wow. about that. That's yeah. incredible. Uh -huh. Amazing. So right. they can learn more about you and Forces of Nature right. Dance Theater at forcesofnature.org. Dot, dot org, right. right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This is Abdel Salam, you guys. And Thank I just you. want to say, say, say this is my wife and my daughter's yes. birthday today. <laughs> you know, um, my daughter was born on the same day my wife was. She's standing right over there. One of the most inc birthday. incredible dancers in the world, Diane Harvey, <laughs> Harvey Salam. And so... Um, Happy birthday, baby. I love you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into our show. Learn more at InsideNYCDance.com and connect with us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube at InsideNYCDance. See you next time.